there are two Famicom RPGs that are based on the Age of Sail, that vague time period of imperialism ranging from about the beginning of the 17th century and going to the end of the 19th century. The continents had been mapped, colonies had been founded, and a truly global trade network had begun. The really strange thing about there being two Famicom RPGs based on this time period is that they were released on the same day. They also couldn't be more different from each other. Today's game, Daiko Kai Jidai, was released by Koei, and naturally, that means it's a port of a computer game. At this time, Koei was still a computer game developer and publisher who dabbled in console games, rather than the other way around. The title is the Japanese term for the Age of Discovery, though if you wanted to be really literal about it, it means the time of great sailing voyages. The plot of the game is that you're a young Portuguese noble out to make your fortune on the high seas. And that's really it. Daikokai Jidai is one of those sandbox games where you have to make your own fun. You start out with a ship, a crew, and some small amount of goods, and then through trading, exploration, or other means, you'll gain fame and fortune. The time period is actually a little bit off in this game, as they have you set out in 1502, but things are really too well established for it to be 1502. It feels like they're off by a century. You start out at Lisbon, and there's several things that you can do in ports. Most significantly, you can trade goods. Buying something cheap in one port and selling it for a lot at another is the bulk of what you're going to be doing in the game. One convenient thing about trading is that ports aren't universal for what you buy. It's not just a list of goods. If you go to buy things, you can only buy what's produced in that area. It won't always be the cheapest place to get them, but you're unlikely to get burned if you just buy whatever looks convenient. You also have to get food, water, and sailcloth for your ships. Your stocks of those are the real limitation to your range. While in town, you can also go to the tavern, which is where you manage your crew. You can also find mates there that will run your additional vessels when you're ready to have a fleet. And you can gamble in taverns if you really want to. They play poker and blackjack there. You have to go to the inn if you want to see your own stats or your ship's stats. And those are the three things that are consistently in every port. The other locations may or may not be there depending on what port you go to. You could have a palace to meet with the king of that country and ask them for additional money or crew. You have to return to the king of Portugal when you're ready to level up. There's a guild where you can buy special equipment like telescopes or figureheads for your ship, and shipyards where you buy additional ships. Okay, so you finally did everything you needed to do in town. Then it's time to head off to sea. And here's where your troubles begin. The world is divided up into small square map screens. And these squares are actually very slightly larger than the Famicom screen, and that makes them scroll a tiny amount. You can rotate your ship to face any one of the eight cardinal directions, and then hit the A button to commit to going in that direction. Then you get to find out if the currents and wind favor you. You move in these very short staccato hops, and it can take a while to move a single square. Going against the wind is pretty difficult, but if your destination happens to be in the direction that the wind is blowing, you'll make great time. Usually what you want to do when you're heading into the wind is tack. That is, don't go directly into the wind, head a little bit off of it, and then move back and forth. Of course, on the scale of the map, your crew should be doing that anyways when you're heading into the wind, and the effects shouldn't be visible. But the sailing in this version of Daiko Kai Jidai is really rough. You start out not knowing where any port in the world is. You can cruise up and down shorelines and not see anything. Never mind the ship traffic that should be going to and from a busy harbor. Ships are extremely rare. In fact, I think I saw a ship once while I was playing for my hour. And unfortunately, I couldn't get to them to try out piracy and naval combat. You have to pass close by a blank feature of land in order to discover the port there. Once you know where it is, then you can land and trade. The map of the world in Daikokai Jidai is just the globe as we know it. 
So theoretically, you could just point your ship west as you start out and get to America. But you do have to level up and get some equipment before you've got ships capable of making that journey. And the map isn't one-to-one -one Earth. Things are off just enough that you might have some trouble with the geography. I set off trying to find the Azores, for example, and just wound up in the middle of the ocean. Your first couple of hours of Dai Kodai Jidai are just finding trade routes, learning where you can buy cheap and sell high. It'll take a little while before you have enough cash to really upgrade. While you're in port, you can hit select to bring up a menu where you can save and load. You can't really do that while you're exploring the world. There's a lot of stuff in this game that I just couldn't get to. It's a Koei game. They give you piles of options to use in the sandbox, and then just let you go to it. And it's a fairly big game. You're going to be playing for a long time before you can circumnavigate the globe. The thing is, Daiko Daiji Dai was ported to a lot of systems. And the Famicom port is probably one of the worst ones. I've read complaints about some of the lesser Japanese computers getting bad ports as well. But really, the hardware that people play this game on are the 16-bit systems. While it wasn't wildly popular, this was a game that was well-received, and it became an entire series for Koei. There even was an MMO eventually. Like virtually every Koei game I've looked at in Family Daily, an hour of play just isn't enough time to give Daiko Kaiji Dai a fair shake. Especially when it crashed on me and corrupted my save. Stuff like this is how you know I'm playing on real hardware. The only way I ever got into combat was by attacking Lisbon. Which, as you might guess, doing that with a starting ship was a good way to lose quickly. Given that, I'm not really going to draw my own conclusion here, and instead just say, if you want to try this one out, play one of the other versions. <laughs> 